All right, John's giving us the thumb. Crystal, are you there? Recording in progress. I'm here. Hi, Crystal. All right, so Crystal, Crystal is going to be remote today. So when she votes, it'll be uh, she'll announce her name and then she'll vote. Okay, because we want to make sure we conform with the governor's uh, whatever the governor says there in his emergency law. So at this time, I'd like to call the uh, Sunderland uh, Select Board meeting to order for January 3rd, 2022. Didn't screw that up. That's a good start. Call to order 643. Um, pretty short meeting. We're going to discuss the Sunderland housing plan. So we had 147 people or so. 147 or 100. Yeah. That filled in the... Uh, the housing plan that for questions, the housing, sign on housing committee worked with FERCOG. Would you like to make a presentation? Shoot. Here we go. Wherever you're more comfortable. Hold on just a second. And by the way, we're not going to be able to see both the presentation and the Zoom folks at the same time. So. Uh, um, I guess, I guess if, you if you have a question, have a question speak, up. speak up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've, just, or we we've got it on ours. Okay. It's just for our sake, we got it on our PC, so if you need to see them, that's, that's fine. That's true. true. All right. <coughs> Do you need, need it up? It up? Um, I'm going to have it out. Okay, okay. okay. You guys. Then, then. Do it this way. All right, so. Thank you for having me. So, I am Ivan Rose, and I am a planner of the Information Council of Government. Uh, we started, started working to help towns in the fall to update our housing plan. Your previous housing plan was on the line in 2016, so it has so it a, a good for five years, five years, five years. Five years. So according to the state, they did the update, updated the act. So, so we started updating that in all. As you mentioned, we wanted to get public input on the plan. We did a survey earlier. We distributed a video of both English and Spanish. Um, Why is that? I think that's 77 people to respond. to respond. Yeah, yeah. Crystal, you can Crystal, hear okay? Nope. Okay. <laughs> yes, I can hear fine. All right. Thank, I just wanted to make sure. Do, doing the Blair Witch Project Sorry. version. Sorry. Excuse me. Uh, if, folks, if people could get a little closer to the microphone. It's pretty echoey from where, where we're listening. And Jeff, when you went over to make the adjustment on the photo, your voice got a thousand percent clearer. I don't know if that's where the uh, the microphone is, but it was a lot clearer when you were there. Thank you. I think the microphone's on the camera, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Better than, we got we got feedback that it's better than better using than the phone. So that's why we're going. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. okay. Let's try it again. All right. All right. How do I sound now? now? Better. Better. Uh, yes, actually. Thank you. Sure. No sure. Problem. No problem. All right. So, so um, the last time was in 2016. So we, so we are updating, updating that. that. We distributed distribute a survey. survey. Great, great, um, great um, public feedback for that. For that. And I'll talk I'll about the details of that a little bit. bit. Um, um, the real, the real goal, goal of the housing plan, plan is, is to understand, understand what the housing the needs are for the community. community. So, so what are what your needs are today? We're all going to be in the future. You know, are our, 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 our seniors going to be able to stay in town as an age? Can your family live in the town with children? children? Can, can employees, employees work in work town live in town? And so those are the overarching goals of the housing plan. Because, because this plan, plan is not just a housing plan, 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 it's also it's a housing also reduction, reduction plan. plan. And that's what uh, uh, the state the requires. State and what that, that does, does it looks specifically at affordable housing in town, town with the subsidized by the right affordable housing, housing but specifically, specifically the amount of amount subsidized, subsidized uh, housing, housing in town. town. And so, and so um, it looks um, at it looks how much you have. Are you over the state or under the state requirement of the town is? Um, the combination of the fact that over 100% of housing will have housing, and, and we'll have an active production plan. Production plan. The town will be protected, protected, protected from any type of housing development. You will have control over 
whether you want to accept whether you want to accept them or not, which is pretty important. Um, so um, let's see. So what we did in, to do this plan, we both we looked at census data, um, at the population, what's been going on in town in terms of the population. The town's population increased a lot from 1970 to 2000, but has pretty much stayed the same since 2000. A little, a little decline, but pretty much constant. Um, projections show that there will be a continued to be a slight decrease in town. However, this does not take into account the North 116 uh, apartments and the new senior housing in town. It also doesn't take into account um, increasing enrollment at UMass. So we think that while projections show there might be a decrease, it'll probably be the same, if not more, people in town. Um, because of the proximity to UMass Amherst, your median income is higher than our surrounding towns. Um, but you do also, because of UMass's uh, location, you have a lot of students and people who work there, there is a higher poverty rate in Sunderland. The poverty rate is currently at 13.1%, per, 13 which means there are quite a few people that need affordable housing town. Uh, the current area median income for a household of three in Sunderland is $74,000. Um, and so what that means is if the median income is $74,000, the way the incomes in town uh, break down is about a third or a high income, but it actually have skew a third of your incomes, of your households in town are extremely low income. So you have kind of a real range of incomes here in town. There's quite a bit at the top, but there's also quite a bit at the bottom. Um, in terms of housing trends, um, housing, the number of housing units being produced in town on average has increased about 2% every year, aside from last year when there was quite a big bump with the new apartment complex in town. Um, as you know, you've got more rental units than you do housing units. 60% 60, 60 of your housing units are a rental. Um, and there are very low vacancy rates in town, some of the lowest around. The census says that currently 0% vacancy rate for home ownership. And the census shows that the vacancy rate for rentals is 3%. However, if you actually go to the apartment complexes and ask, they're at 0% as well. So because there's very few units available, the supply is low, which means the prices are really high, in addition to the fact that because you're so close to UMass, your apartments are being rented um, by bedroom, not by apartments. So the, the rental rates are very, very high. In fact, they're higher than in Amherst. Your average gross rent is $1,400 per month, compared to Amherst, which is only $1,300. So it's a little bit higher than Amherst. <clears throat> so what that means is a lot of people are paying a lot of money for housing here in town. Home ownership, um, so what, what's generally defined as unaffordable housing or being cost burdened is if you pay more than 30% of your gross income on housing costs. Uh, here in Sunderland, homeowners, homeowners in town can pretty much afford their housing. In fact, only 7% have cost burdened, um, experience cost burden on, for, their home, for their affordability of their housing. However, if you look at rentals, um, let's see, 30% uh, are cost burdened, but 43% uh, are severely cost burdened. So at approximately 70%, three quarters of your renters are paying more than 30% of their income on housing in Sunderland, which is a really, really high number. <clears throat> so that's kind of the overarching summary of the data that we found as we updated the plan. In terms of the survey and outreach that we did, as I mentioned, we got 177 responses back. Um, more, 60% of those respondents were homeowners, so it's kind of flipped in terms of the actual reality and the fact that 60% of your um, residents live in rentals, but the fact that we got 40% response from rental uh, units is actually pretty good for, we usually get uh, much lower rates, response rates from them. Um, what we found from those surveys is that 60% of all of those respondents had affordability concerns. They were concerned about how much money they were spending on their housing. 25% of those respondents said that they plan to move in the next five years, mostly due to the cost of housing. And that spanned across both young and older respondents. 
when we asked uh, survey respondents how they would like to envision helping to deal with the affordability issue in town, the rehabilitation reuse of existing housing was a high priority. Um, respondents said they definitely would like to see um, new housing or any reuse of housing be located in the village or near existing developments, not near in farmland or outside of those areas. <clears throat> There are three um, housing types that were highly supported by respondents to help with affordability, and those were um, increasing the number of deed restricted affordable units, uh, starter homes for first time home buyers, and smaller homes for seniors to downsize to. So, with that information from the survey and the census information, we um, created, we basically reaffirmed the goals from the last plan. And those top three goals of the housing plan are to increase the amount of affordable housing in a way that maintains the community character, um, it balances residential development with the protection of natural, scenic, and historic resources, and then importantly, we want to make sure we engage residents if we're going to do anything to increase affordable housing, whether it's zoning or to develop new housing units, we engage residents early in the process to get their input and gain consensus. <coughs> So having said that, um, some of the strategies that, well, the plan actually recommends 25 strategies to increase housing options in town. The top four priorities that the plan identifies are to continue to work with the Housing Re uh, Redevelopment Authority, HRA, to obtain funding for housing rehabilitation. What that is is to basically get money for low income or moderate uh, homeowners or rental um, units to weatherize their units, bring them up to code, make sure that they're accessible so they can stay in their housing. Uh, another priority was to consider, consider establishing an affordable housing trust. This would be an independent body in town that can um, basically act faster than if you had to go through town meeting, if land needed to be purchased um, quickly, or if um, they can also uh, maintain a uh, first time home buyer, uh, funding system. Um, people can go to them to apply for funding. Um, they basically can act as a, as a quicker, more nimble unit than the town, but they would operate um, through the town. It would be a board of um, representatives that be made up through town uh, residents. Um, the third high priority would be to establish new housing opportunities in or near the village center. So as opportunities come along, whether there's new land or um, buildings become available to reuse to focus on any new housing, uh, affordable housing to be located in those places. And then finally, the, the top priority is to collaborate with neighboring towns on affordable housing initiatives. What this means is um, there's several towns around here that also have CPA funding, maybe pooling those resources to create a hire a housing, regional housing coordinator that can um, either staff or research an affordable housing trust can help towns with monitoring and dealing with the uh, subsidized deed-restricted housing that you do have in town. They can help um, develop properties such as the senior housing that's going in on Sanderson Place. Um, basically, someone to devote more full-time resources to the issue of housing in the town. Um, so those are the top priorities. I can go through all 25, you might not want to, but they're on page 99 of the plan. Um, they're pretty much the same from the last plan. They've been tweaked a little bit just to adjust what's been happened. A lot has already been done by the town since the last plan, and so that reflects that. The next steps are to have the planning board and the select board approve the housing plan. We're going to have a public comment period on the plan, which is available on the webpage till January 10th, I believe. Um, once we get that feedback, we'll incorporate that into the plan, and then the planning board and select boards will approve it. It'll then go to the state for their approval, and then once that's approved, you have an official housing production plan for the next five years that will help you with chapter and chapter 40B and also guide any uh, housing strategies you may want to be doing in the future. Um, so that's the real quick summary of a over 100 page document, but I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Can I just quickly um, say thank you, Megan, for the sure. presentation and also to recognize the members of the housing committee um, 
Crystal Drake Tremblay, um, Stuart Beckley, who's also participating in this meeting, and uh, Peter Jessup was the third member, and also Alyssa LaRose, who sort of did the previous plan and, and led us through um, the beginning of this one as well until Megan took over. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of them. And Alyssa says, good job, <laughs> Megan. New capacity of HRA. There you go. Question? Um, uh, this is Phyllis, and um, anybody who knows me knows my head is down the toilet. And um, my question is that this is like a 99-page document, and on page 67 is the only place that anybody says anything about septics. And that should be way more of an important issue in um, allowing zoning changes and housing um, would be not to, um, is the, the town has a municipal septic and do they have the capacity for um, increases? And it says right on, the, on page 67 that in 2013, they sort of looked into getting more hookup and decided against it because it was too expensive and then it doesn't it, it talks about a, you know there's a teeny tiny paragraph about well if the land in um with private septics has hybrid soils or wetlands well then we probably can't do anything there it doesn't say anything about overloading um the density of septics on um on any property, the street that I live on, almost every house that has been sold and had a pass a Title V inspection failed, and over time, septics are failing. And a lot of some of this housing plan doesn't give enough emphasis at all to Title V or septics and the limitations that that could. Um, Pose. Is there any comment on that? Uh, so we can certainly add a clause about that. Um, I will say that the priority is very clear that it should be um, the, the top priority for new housing should be in the villages in downtown. So that would imply that it was beyond sewer um, and not in the outer areas where they're septic, but um, I take your point that that's still an issue and should be mentioned. Um, in the in the document, it talks about um, doing accessory units on uh, houses every place. It doesn't say anything about septic limitations and um, you know the fact that that some of the existing houses their own septic before they do anything to it won't pass. You know, we're um, the the development in the places that can handle it, the ones that have um, the sewer systems right now for the municipal sewer system, is not an issue to me as much. Uh, other than, does the town have the capacity? If you start putting these in, is there enough capacity, or is is that going to be an expenditure that isn't? Um, addressed in the housing document. Thank you for that. We can certainly, I can certainly make sure that that is mentioned in both the ADU section, the accessory dwelling units, that that needs to be considered before um, that's passed, um, or if it's passed. Um, and I can also add some language on, that, on page 67 about that. Okay, because there's issues that's involved in it all the way from from 83 to 88 talk about um, the goals and strategies and don't really talk about septic issues. And that the fact that, that flex development and transfer of um, transfer development and it can overload the density in places that have private sewers. Okay, thank you. Dana Roscoe, got a question? Yeah, nice job, Megan, thank you. 
Um, so the, the key difference um, between our previous housing production plan and this housing production plan is uh, in our previous plan, we were at or near zero uh, percent of our affordable housing. And this one, we actually uh, achieve and exceed the 10%. Um, I'm wondering what the projected growth rate is and how soon uh, it will be before we are again below 10%. Uh, well, that's a good question. So the, the projected growth rate is that you're going to be declining. So you, you won't be needing as much. Um, whether that's true or not, we don't quite know yet. We, we don't think it will. We think there will be population growth, which will mean new, more housing units will be needed. But the data as of right now shows that there will be a decline. So it'll be pretty close to what we're doing. So the, right now, to be compliant with Chapter 40B, you, a town has to not only have an active housing production plan, but over the next two years, they have should, well, next year to two years, produce 90, 17 new, new units of affordable housing. So that kind of gives you an idea of what the town needs to be working for. Um, you are over the 10% now, well, 10.7%, I think is what it is right now. So you have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, and then there, it's a good question. I can't have the crystal ball. <laughs> okay, so so the nine to seventeen that were that were required to produce is that um, are, are the one twenty North Main is is that are, are we getting credit for one twenty North Main or that's over and above one twenty? So that's already been counted. Once I believe it's already been counted. It, it has the been. Building permit. Yeah. Yep. So that already that's included. So the, you'll, the 9 to 17 is this new additional beyond the, the 120 main and beyond the North 116 flats. And, and I just want to add, Dana, I think that the, um, the, I guess the denominator in the equation is the 2020 census data. So, right. you know, until the 2030 census comes out, the the town does not have to accept any 40b proposals it doesn't like uh, that doesn't mean we shouldn't be thinking about that as we approach 2030 but that that number isn't going to change so if we create any more affordable units um, the percentage is going to increase regardless of how many uh, market rate units we create until until the 2030 census comes out and and the denominator changes and so this plan, does Thanks, not, yeah. and this plan does not include the 2020 census. We don't have that data yet at the town level that we need for this plan. So we don't quite know what those numbers are going to be. Okay. Bruce Bennett? I'd just like to comment on the septic systems. Um, as a member of the Board of Health, uh, presently, in, in order, when it, whenever anybody makes an addition to a, a house and adds bedrooms, the the applicant has to come before the Board of Health to make sure the septic system can handle the number of bedrooms there. And the septic system size is based on the number of bedrooms in that house. Um, and the houses that were built in from, I would say, from 1980 to 1990, uh, the individuals who were doing the perk test there then were not doing a good job. And that's why the systems are failing. If you look at when those houses were built, that the systems have failed, it was between 80 and 92, say. Uh, since Title V went into effect, there's very strict standards on what has to be done, how close the groundwater is to, uh, you have to have a minimum of four feet between the groundwater and the bottom of the leach field. And those standards are being followed very strictly in Sunderland now. Um, we, we, we prevented the sales of houses um, from the Board of Health because the house was built for, you know, the, the septic system was sized for three bedrooms. The people added a couple more bedrooms and then five bedrooms, and they have to increase the size of the septic system or reduce the house down to the number of bedrooms in order to satisfy the size of the room, the house with the septic system. Um, and as far as the, the town sewer system goes, I believe, Tom, and you can correct me at that, we're only at about 50% capacity. 
uh, right, it's right around that. Actually, probably a little bit less, Joe. Uh, Bruce. Yeah, so we right. have And if, if you look at, you know, if, if you say you want to expand the septic system, um, you know, to the existing houses in town, it is very expensive. And, and actually, Sutherland has very little land to actually build housing on because a lot of it's an APR, um, it's conservation land. Um, if you look at open lots in Sunland, there's nothing really available. And um, it, 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 it's very difficult to, to build a house and buy a house in Sunland now because the demand is so high. Um, and, and you talk about affordable housing and rehabbing houses, you know, a house on North Main Street was, was a dump. Um, it sold for $110,000 two years ago, and I believe it just sold for $450,000. So you talk affordable housing, um, you know, it's very, very difficult to get it because we don't have the land available. And if you pay $110,000 for a lot, you can't build it, $200,000 house or something. Um, but I just want to clarify the septic systems and the way we monitor septic systems and how they are and how it's now. Um, it's, it's a very strict standard that follows Title V closely. Thank you, Bruce. But that, does, that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be within the plan and that it should restrict in areas where you put certain kind of housing. You know, you're looking to put the, the, the accessory uh, building units in places that um, may not be able to handle it. And I know that you would inspect it and you wouldn't let it go, but it shouldn't just be a blanket to be in there. And also, those accessory units, I believe, if you put them in as rentals, they don't, um, they, they don't add up to the 40B. They're just more rentals in Sunderland. In fact, they're at, they're they're working against 40B because it's putting in more units that are not considered compliant for 40B. Is that correct? So the plan would be the plan is not just to do subsidized units. It's also just to provide housing options for all ranges of populations in town. So it, it, a unit does not need to be deed restricted and, and be meet the 40B requirements to still provide options in town. The plan kind of does both. So it's a, an ADU accessory dwelling unit may not meet the state's requirements, that's correct, but does still provide housing options. But that ordinance still hasn't been written, and it can't I, be crafted in a way that yeah. meet these issues. We haven't even tackled ADUs right, so at this all. Is just a recommendation to explore that possibility, yeah. and I'm assuming that when it does get explored, it would take into those considerations. I know they're gaining a lot of traction, especially usually in, in high housing markets like California and things like that. And it's definitely an option to look at, especially as we have more seniors staying with families and things like that. And um, you know, kids that can't afford to move out, yeah. buy a house or an apartment. So, 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 and again, this this was a present. This was a, is a presentation on the housing plan. Um, 130 pages yeah. give or take and so there is a lot of information and I don't think our our goal wasn't to deep dive into any particular areas just get get an idea of where the concerns um, well have Megan make the presentation for people to read the housing plan so that we can now have a meaningful discussion going forward and if somebody ha if there's a concerns about where houses or accessory uses or tiny houses, which are men mentioned quite o quite often in the report, right. uh, tiny houses, um, and and there was a, a lot of concern. And I think Bruce, one of the things by what Bruce did is talk about how much um, APR land and that we have in the town of Sunderland. You know, a lot of people are concerned about building on on farmland. Well. And if you looked at if you looked at our our maps that designate where people can build, they'll find out there's not a lot of building that can happen on farmland right now because most of it's an APR. So um, just just like the on the south end of town, 
where it used to be tobacco fields, now grown potatoes, that, that the town worked very hard with actually partnered with the town of Hadley and the APR people, that that's all protected now on, on, on both uh, along uh, 47 and Plum Tree. That's protected because of the way the town pr worked at it. So I, again, I, I, I don't wanna, I, I don't, I, I think the concerns need to be addressed, put forward, um, but this, now that the plan is out there, now, now, now it's a discussion. Now it's actually the good time right. not to, to you happen. Get the public and, comment period coming yeah. up. So, yep. so. And I just want to emphasize that one of the top, I mentioned at the beginning of this, one of the top goals of the plan is to also make sure that the public is engaged. So if, if the town decides to pick one of these 25 strategies to start pursuing, one of those goals is to make sure that the public is bought in early to make sure there is consensus and that everyone understands the pros and cons, whether it's pursuing accessory dwelling units or whether it's reusing or redeveloping the cozy corners, parcel, things like that. Um, making sure that people are agreeing and have consensus as to that is what the strategy should be for town. And I think you hit an important point too. This is the overall housing plan. This is not just for, you know, protected, uh, you know, more affordable market rate housing in that respect too because I remember there were two items on there which are, are very strong needs um, is affordable starter housing and in homes that are affordable and smaller so that if you want to downsize and move into something like that and Bruce hit, a, hit the nail right on the head too about and it's not just Sunderland it's everywhere like California Boston you know you know all those places once you're spank, paying a lot of money for the land, right off the bat, the housing costs are going to be way higher. Just because, you know, you're, you've already got your foot in the door, and you're spending a ton of money just to get that lot. Right, which is why one of the recommendations, one of the prioritized recommendations, is establishing a, potentially establishing a, uh, an affordable housing trust. That's a body yeah. that can help with pay, um, first time down payments for homeowners, or helping subsidize that initial land costs that kind of help bring those costs down there it's a very um it's a, it's a body that can really do a lot of things in different ways which may be helpful to might be worth looking at yeah, yeah. it's worth looking at certainly and, and tools. with these plans they, we do tend to focus on the subsidized housing portion but we're in the fortunate position that now we're over 10 percent, so we're kind of protected and so we can kind of step back and what are the real housing options that are needed in town that we acknowledge we definitely need to continue striving for the subsidized unit um, issue, but there's also people in town that don't necessarily need that. They still need maybe a smaller home to downsize into as they age, or there needs to be more accessible housing units um, for people with disabilities. There's, there's other range of issues, not just the subsidized housing, that this plan also looks at. I think we got to think about too the changing nature of workforce and where people are working because a lot more people are working remotely now, and that completely changes housing patterns. So that that's going to have an effect. Now we're not in a position to really predict that because it's all just happening now. So that's going to clearly have an impact too. I, I and I I would say that affordable housing. Is a complicated situation in the town of Sun and this report yeah. actually complicated. kind of kind of explains it like probably hadn't been done before and and about the impact of university and why the rates are higher student because student you say student housing student housing is not necessarily inexpensive because student housing students at times May, while they may not have a lot of money themselves, they receive money differently, and that drives the prices up. And and so those price and and, and again, I, I think it's 130 pages, it's or so, and it's very interesting reading because you know even see, in in our in our survey we talk about senior housing a lot. The people do. Well, the town of Sunderland is going to be putting 34 units of senior housing online, hopefully, by the fall time. Mm -hmm. If you look in all of Franklin County, that's immense. Yeah. And, and we're there. We, we've done that. And, and I know 
we, we've been talking to other communities that are trying to, to model how we did in, in our time. The FERCOG, the FERCOG was immensely helpful with make it, and they're going to become much more busy because, you know, Deerfield now is looking, and, Shelby, and other communities are looking how, how Sunderland did it, and they're, and they're trying, but we did it through the help of the FERCOG, but we have 34 units that are going up. Um, and when we, when, again, we talk about we talk about the need of affordable housing. David said it before. We know what kind of affordable housing. People in here talk about condos. Well, they they think of the condos over here, Buttonball. That's Ace. But we have condos up in North Sunderland, also. And and people. I mean, there's not a lot of them. But there's, I, you know, 13, 14, 12, whatever the number is up there. But there, there are condos up there, and they do remarkably well. They're, they're, they don't stay on the market. When, when a unit becomes available, they don't stay for sale for a long period of time. They never have. So I, I think that we, there are options. And, you know, somebody came in and talked about doing a condo conversion at Cozy Corner. We'd, we'd like to talk to them. Not a, not another market rate like a rent uh, rent. apartment, right. because we and again you can look at this and we can we can say you may you may not make as much money, but this is what's needed in our town. So, well, and like like you're talking about too, like not only the FERCOG but the developer help and say it's a, it's that magical pairing of a good project working with like the FERCOG and other community groups and the developer correct you know it, it's so it's a I, team I, effort I, I I just I, I would hope I would hope people take yeah. the opportunity to read this and th and then we can have a, a an, an understanding of, of, of the troubles that we're faced with and then we can move forward on it Great. I just want to point out um, the person who really helped with hundred with the 120 Main Street um, and this plan previous plan is Alyssa LaRose who used to work at the COG yep. who now works at the HRA and well, actually, took over for the Rural Development in Incorporated. So she is going to be helping develop housing units like 120 North Main Street throughout Franklin County. She's going to be the resource, Alyssa, <laughs> to do these projects. Excellent. Yeah. Bruce, do you have another oh. question? Where can I get a hard copy of the uh, housing plan? I have an extra I can leave with Jeff or. Yeah, we, we can uh, print off a hard copy for you, Bruce. Paper copies? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is, it's online as well, I should mention. Yeah, that's I spoke to Larry, Larry and Foster. Um, I think the town should be congratulated for the senior housing project and for getting to, it was not a straight line, getting to this 10.7%. Um, it, it was a wrestling match, and our, our town leaders worked very hard to make it as smooth as it could be. Um, I think that one of the things we have to, I'm sure we all recognize, is that, um, as, as you pointed out, this is not just a housing plan, it's an HPP. And that the things that are being talked about in this plan are potentially quite disruptive. There are things like using overlays the way that spot zoning might have been used in the past, and it's specifically mentioned in the plan and it's putting two housing units where there used to be a house lot we know what towns look like when you drive through and it's a house and there's a house do we know what they look like when you look through and then there's two houses where there used to be one and there's four cars in the driveway instead of two and maybe isn't maybe you got to rethink all the what all the driveways look like but they might look some of them look like What's happening in town a little bit right now is that people are buying houses not to live here. They're buying houses and they're LLCs, they're corporations, you can see them in the paper. And they're buying them because they can get several hundred dollars a month for every bedroom. And they're doing it. And I, I'm not making this up, I've seen, and that wasn't just a party night, a house with 11 cars in the driveway. And I saw one this week with seven in the driveway. If you 
cannot control that, we're going to have even worse problems in the future when suddenly there's two units that we all think of perhaps this is a family of family members coming back to town all living happily and it's not what in five years you have you can't control the future of what kind of evil landlord pardon my french comes in and jams even more people and, and bruce bennett was absolutely right they're not making any more land that's a problem in sunderland well that that you wanted to build houses there's not there isn't much land you can't you you know mom told me I'm not going to take the subdivision no, no, that's, these, the potentials of this plan are really disruptive so we say well it's just a plan we're going to be talking about it further but there's there's a whole lot this isn't just another this isn't just another five-year update this the, the nature of the plan being an hpp is different its legal implications are different the legislative landscape where it's now it's only a simple majority you know well larry, it's only, larry, it's a larry video anyway larry let me interrupt if i could interrupt you just for a second for for any of these things that that happen, they have to they have to occur through through bylaw changes. Okay, bylaw changes require town meeting vote, and you would have to have two thirds. Is it still two thirds? Or some things have been revised for a simple majority. So so there, it, it it's if, not. Uh, Tom Tom, they don't have to. The the legislature just made it so that you don't need a two thirds to yeah. put in accessory buildings anymore. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a simple majority. I just. It's, so, it's it's crazy and in fact it's it's in your plan there it says the town meeting voted it down in 2013 and we're bringing it back again because now we only need a simple majority which they didn't have in 2013 well, either but they specifically you specifically wrote it in your plan we're gonna we're gonna bring this back to town meeting it didn't make it last time but we're gonna do it again this time you know type of thing um there is wording in there. I can give you the page numbers if you want, but I'm sure you can find it. Okay. So, 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 oh. it, I, I just wanted to say that you know you, you're just not it's just not going to if if the housing plan is voted to go through, um, it it doesn't really it doesn't change our bylaws. The bylaws have to be changed at town meeting. So, I, I that, that's that's the only thing I wanted to say. All right. Thank you. Uh, just one other one point that was uh, there was a lot of work in this document. One of the things that I noticed was the uh, Sunderland um, does very well, I guess you'd say well, in the rate of subsidized housing in town. It's comparable with Amherst and Montague. And when you look at that and compare it, however, to Deerfield, Waitley, and Lovefrey, they've got very very little subsidized housing and there may be opportunities as you were speaking earlier about uh, regional solutions and regional uh, attacks on these problems of working with uh, spreading the wealth a little bit with those communities um, and it may take some adjustment of uh, PPTA rooms to make these things workable um, it's a big project, but uh, I know Tom has, uh, has many thoughts on uh, the, the nature of uh, the possibilities of regional transit. Anyway, thank you. You're welcome, Larry. Thank you. Hey, we, we appreciate all the, uh, the input. The, the, input's, the input's important. Dana, you had a comment? Yeah, I do. <clears throat> so this plan makes many recommendations and and it's really up to the town the, the cog isn't going to come in and impose anything on us the town must adopt any any of the many many 25 whatever recommendations one or two or none that is is 100 percent up to the town in 2013 the planning board truly believed 
that an accessory dwelling unit would be a benefit to families in town. And I came personally and argued that case and I lost. And that's it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking for a way, oh great, now it's only 50%, now I can, I can get it through. If the town of Sunderland doesn't want to do that, who am I to force the town into that? I'm, I'm here as a resident in town to do what's good for the town, what the town wants to do. And the town told me loud and clear they didn't want an accessory dwelling unit. So whether it's 50% or a two-thirds or, or a nine-tenths majority, if the town doesn't want it, I, I'm not going to be the one that's out there trying to, to force it through. Uh, and Larry, I, I completely uh, agree with you. Uh, the LLCs are a huge problem, uh, and, uh, and that's a, a reason to be suspicious uh, of, of uh, some of these uh, potential uh, opportunities. But I will not, I am telling you right here and now, I will not be the one that ever comes back uh, with an accessory dwelling unit bylaw because uh, I have uh, been there. Thank, uh, thank you, Dana. And, and But I, I, I just like to add, sometimes, sometimes the most important the most important thing is a discussion, and 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 that's we can't lose in our world today. It just seems that discussion is a very hard thing to do any longer. But we have found so so maybe that when you looked at it in 2013, the the wording wasn't right. Maybe it needed to be tweaked. But but it's okay to talk about those things. Right. And 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 it doesn't make. Dana or the planning board or the housing committee or anyone a bad person it it's just an idea or a thing that they, they that they, or the fur cog that they they want to look at I, I again I, I think sometimes I, I know when we 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 go to town meeting with a budget I don't think there's too many people in town that have a better idea about the budget than the board of selectmen and the finance committee I can honestly say um, that the budget that we present to town meeting many times gets modified. I, I don't take it as a good thing or a bad thing. It's just like that's the, the will, will of our residents and that, that's the way it's going to be and we'll, we'll try to make it happen. And they may see something that we didn't see. or there, there's a pro But that's why we have these discussions. That's why we have town meetings. And believe me, while town meetings may be a quaint way to do business, it's not really a good way to do business because you can go to a town meeting and someone can put up something and have their people there and pass something. So, well, just because there's issues like you know corporations buying homes, there's ways that we can deal with that. Well, there is, and 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 and, we just and need I to be I'm, creative in our approaches. I, I well, you can't you can't prevent someone from buying a house, no. but there's things that. You know, we used to have a uh, a, a relation clause that you, you could have no more than X amount of people that are were not limit. You know, they have to be relate related to one another. Right. And we can uh, talk to other communities because this problem is by no means yeah. unique to Sunderland. I, I well, I also I also think that we have to have a product a uh, uh, proactive zoning enforcement officer. That when he goes by a house and he sees seven cars parked in the parking lot or out in front of the house that maybe we need to stop because especially i don't know too many houses that have seven bedrooms especially on plum tree road or south plain road or north plain road or pick a pick a house plus there's other external Bob, factors Bob, you're assuming there's only one person in a bedroom <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, so so i, I think we we Sorry. have tools. We just we just have we just have to we just have to make sure those tools work. But and I think I know there's going to be at least four increases that the Fed has announced that yeah. they know of. So there's a lot of other things that will affect because one of the reasons why the housing markets have gone bonkers is because yeah. of available cheap money for loans. So 
as that starts to dry up, that inevitably will have a dampening impact on house sales. No question about it, depending on how it goes. But um, you, you are loud and clear. David, you're way too far away from the mic, so you are like just a background noise. Ah, uh, oh well. <laughs> Stuart, Stuart, did you want to add anything? Um, I'm going to be really a background noise. Uh, I just want to follow up on yours and Mr. Roscoe's point. Um, the Housing Committee doesn't presume that the four strategies that were checked as high priority are the high priority. Right. We would love for the board and the planning board to add to that list, change that list. Um, but that's why it was submitted to you for a review and hopefully approval. Yep. I'm just going to repeat that in case it was hard to hear, Stuart. He said that the the four highest priorities were what the housing uh, the the housing committee wanted to present to the select board and the planning board and the community as high priorities, but wanted to get feedback on those um, and and didn't necessarily mandate that those were the high priorities. So I just wanted to make sure everybody heard that point. Thank you, Stuart. All right, anything else? Liz Sillen, comment? Liz, you're muted. Sorry, um, yeah, I was just curious about what you, what you mean in item number two, allow for open space residential development as of right? Um, so I believe right now the open space residential development is by special permit. And so it, the recommendation was to make it as of right so that you don't have to go through a lengthy permit process to be able to do housing that protects um, and clusters homes rather than protects, okay. so it protects open space rather than using the entire large area to develop. Um, yeah. So it makes it easier to protect more open space. So you mean sort of cluster housing on a, on a large lot? Is that what you mean by open space residential yes, development? Yes, so it's also known as cluster development. Yes, yeah, so that would make it easier yep. to do that. Okay, thanks. I just didn't know what the term meant. Yeah, and again, it's for others who are part of discussion, this is just a, one of the options to explore this plan recommends. Thank you, Liz. Okay, any more com comments? Megan, you have anything else? Um, if you do have comments, um, you can send them to Jeff or to me. My email is mrhodes at furpod.org, um, and we're accepting public comment to January 10th. Um, and we would love to you know, know whether you think the priorities are correct, or if they should be reordered, if additional ones should be prioritized. Um, please let us know. Thank you, Megan. Yeah. I, I, uh, and, and I really we have, Could we have your email address, please? Uh, yeah, it's M. So my name is Megan Rhodes, R H O D E S. And so my email is M Rhodes at furcog.org. And M R H O D E S? That's right. Thank you very much. And you can also email me, Larry and Phyllis, and, and I'll certainly pass it along to Megan too. Okay. CC. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and you could always just go on the FurCog website and uh, you can find Megan. Under the planning page, yeah. She, she, she's there also. The, her email address is there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so without hearing any more um, discussion, it, it, this is just on, this is just, the plan is out there now. Now, now, now comes, a, now that was, Part A of the hard work. Now, now Part B. Now, now it's going to be sold to the residents of town. Right. All right. All right. We'll do work on that. Thank you, Megan. All right. Thank Thanks. You. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. Um, we didn't have a whole bunch else for this evening except for Crystal. Are you still there? Uh, yeah. She's out there. She's there. Yep. Crystal, we're going to go through a couple of things. One is the uh, uh, the minutes, the approved the minutes of December thirteenth. I entertain a motion. And the twentieth. Huh? And the twentieth. And the twentieth. Okay, sorry. Motion. I have a motion made. Second. Crystal seconds the motion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Aye. All right, we have a 3 0 on that. We only had the uh, December 13th. I thought yeah, we when we posted the, the <laughs> agenda for this, we didn't have a meeting planned okay. for the 20th. All right, so. Um, we, we can I, do it next week if you want. Well, I, I haven't been able to read the entire plan. So I, I wasn't ready to vote tonight on the we're, plan. No. Were, you, were you ready to vote oh, on no, the plan? Yeah, we're not, we don't not vote until, until it's been, we got the comments right. back. And yeah. First of all, all your extra time, you probably had a chance to read the plan, right? <laughs> I actually have probably... No, well, no, not because, because there's been emails on through the housing committee people yeah. oh, um, that's right. for corrections and all that. Yeah. So. Yes. Okay. So I'm I, not an overachiever. I just had to do it, you know, <laughs> for other reasons. So, so Jeff, j just so you're aware, I, I don't like to present something one night and then vote on it, yep. especially something on anything. So, so, so most of the time on a plan or anything, I like we talk about it, and and something like this. Then you have a, a week so that you can right. review it, read it. Think about what's been said, then come back and vote on it the second. No, yeah, and I, I was scheduling this vote for two weeks out so that the, we could have the planning board That's see fine. how they said yeah. what yeah. they said next week. That's good. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else, David, you want to bring up? Uh, no. Crystal, you want to bring anything else up? I'm good. Jeffrey? Uh, just two quick things um, the state approved the fiscal year 22 tax rate for the town and it's going to be fourteen dollars and seventy cents per thousand dollars of assessed value um, and then the second was that uh, next Wednesday we have our Riverside Park pre-construction meeting. Ah, there you go. Uh, meeting with both of the contractors and the designers for the Good. project and going Good. over everything. So, so also just so we uh, we also just got an update from RDI about the, uh, about the project. Yeah. Uh, 120 North Main Street. And just to let everyone know, is that it looks like it may be a couple months behind schedule maybe but it looks like it's going to be completed by the end of the summer 2022 so uh, hopefully um, and hopefully they're going to be able to uh, um, do another site visit for us as well yeah. good all right Crystal you got you, you want to make a motion I can't hardly hear you, Tom. That's good. David. A motion to adjourn. David makes a motion to adjourn. Oh, I second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have a motion made and seconded. Our next meeting will be next uh, Monday night, 6.30 here. Please note that we all are in mask, um, that uh, we have an uptick of uh, COVID going around, so I would highly recommend uh, people stay safe. Uh, get your booster shots. There's going to be one in Leverett next Friday. This coming Friday night or Friday from one to six o'clock, one thirty to six o'clock. So um, the the Vax bus is coming there. So all right, we we have a motion made, seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, Crystal Drake, John Mike. We have a three zero, Jeff. Please declare us out at uh, seven. 34. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, John.